Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 48 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this video, let's learn a bit about image quality metrics using a reference image. So if you have a reference image, that's your gold standard. Compared to that, how do other images actually measure? So there are certain metrics and uh, let's actually have a quick look at it. First of all, I should mention these metrics are available as part of your standard scikit image library. And I'm gonna focus primarily on the latest version, 0.17 or later. Of course, the same tools are available even in the previous versions, except they were available in scikit-image.measure instead of scikit-image.metrics. So apparently they moved a whole bunch of functionality from one to the other. So you need to keep an eye on these changes when it comes to standard libraries. Now. When it comes to non-standard library, I found a library called SEWAR, Sewer, uh, I guess, and uh, you can pip install Sewer. And this is uh, basically a whole bunch of these measurements, again, like root mean squared or whatever, that they have uh, kind of coded them uh, and made it available. They have a few more of these metrics. That's why I'm adding this. And the good thing is, I mean, they have the whole source code and everything. Of course, if you want, you can copy that and make it local. Uh, but let's actually have a quick look at the top three primary metrics that we use as a, a, a part of our reference-based image quality metrics. The first one, is mean squared error. And I also paired up root mean squared error because this is nothing but your mean squared error, uh, you know, square root of that value. So mean squared error is given by this equation, again, how many uh, points, and uh, it's basically looking at the square difference between the actual and the predicted, right? So if you actually do, uh, for example, machine learning, or if you're trying to fit uh, a whole data, po a bunch of data points to a straight line, you're actually looking at the actual data point and then what the straight line is predicting. And then that's how you calculate your mean squared error for your uh, prediction, which is linear regression in this example. For machine learning, you do the same. If you're actually predicting any, uh, or doing any regression type of uh, problem where you're predicting a value, it's very customary to look at mean absolute error or mean squared error. So we're gonna use pretty much the same thing, except here we are actually looking at uh, two different images, right? Not predicted. One is your gold standard image, your reference image, and the other one is your uh, uh, image that you're trying to compare, which we call it predicted, for example, okay? So that's a mean squared error. Root mean squared error is just the square root of that, like I mentioned. Now, peak signal to noise ratio, especially in uh, certain fields like MRI, for example, imaging, it's quite common to see this uh, term, like peak mean squared error. And again, it's a logarithmic of max over MSC. So again, this is dependent on mean squared error. So as part of peak signal to noise, it's calculating the mean squared error, except it's actually taking the square of the maximum pixel value. And maximum pixel value for an 8-bit image is just 255, right? 2 to the power of 8. So you have the maximum pixel value is uh, 255 squared divided by MSC, and this is uh, base 10 logarithmic. And this is it. This is your peak signal to noise uh, equation. So most of this, you can, uh, you can kind of code it yourself. You don't need any other libraries. But if someone already did the job, we can just go ahead and import it. Now, uh, the uh, structural similarity index, it takes texture into account. In these two cases, this is just purely statistical way of actually looking at the difference between two different data points, right? But here, SSI takes texture into account, and here is the original reference paper. And uh, if you want, you can code the whole thing yourself. But again, uh, I believe uh, this is part of both uh, psychic image and also part of uh, this other library that I uh, just mentioned about. So uh, this is just a quick background I would like to provide, but let's jump into the code to actually look at this. Now, first of all, I should mention that I'm using scikit image version 0.17.2, and uh, I created a new environment uh, in Python. So I keep my you know uh, personal environment separate from this, uh, which means I just realized when I tried to run the code, I just realized that no module named sewer, right? I mean, so now I have to, or CWAR, I should say. Uh, so I installed pip install SEWAR. It just went ahead and did everything fine. So in fact, I, what I did not do is try to import and see if it's actually working. 
there's no reason why it shouldn't. So uh, it should be, I don't know why it is slow, but it should be importing it. We'll see that in a second. There you go. Now, uh, more documentation about these. Uh, so here you can actually, let me go ahead and maximize this. Uh, so there you go. So here is the uh, page where it tells you a bit more about uh, SEWAR library. And scikit image, I'm not going to talk much about it because you know how to find it. It's a very standard library. And here, if you don't want to import this all the time, I don't know, go ahead and look at the licensing here. But uh, typically, if you look at the code, it's pretty straightforward, right? I mean, here they're calling GT as your gold standard or your reference image, and P is the image that you are comparing. Uh, you know, this is your image that you are assessing uh, the quality of. So mean squared error. They just, you can see how they're calculating it, right? I mean, this is the squared and then they're taking the mean of it. And then root mean squared error, they're just taking the square root of mean squared error. And uh, they have a whole bunch of other things, you know, PSNI, uh, PSNR, they have, uh, for example, UQI, whatever that is, calculates universal image quality index. And you can see what it is actually doing by looking at the code down here, structure similarity index right there. So uh, the code is out there. If you just want to copy this code and then get it, study it, or you can kind of uh, save it as your one of your Python files that you want to import, you can do that, okay? Again, look at the uh, look at the licensing there. Okay, so now let's get back to the code, and here is the code, and uh, I'll just uh, go through this line by line as usual, and I'm gonna include uh, some of these links so you can go ahead and uh, uh, get more information, you know, as part of the description of this video. Okay, so the first four lines, nothing nothing new here. Uh, standard import of our library, so I'm importing OpenCV. Uh, so I can read my images. You can also read your images using uh, scikit image if you want. And NumPy, because we'll probably do some sort of math later on. Uh, probably we are not doing that. It says NumPy is imported but unused, so I can remove that. And uh, SCWAR, I just installed it, right? Pip install uh, uh, this library. And from that library, I'm gonna import full ref, okay? So that's because all of these are part of the full ref class. If you look up here, um yeah right there full ref yeah all this documentation belongs to full ref so we are going to import our functions that are present as part of full ref right here okay and scikit image so first two steps again nothing new so let's go ahead and run these lines and let me clear the screen here and by the way i'm using uh, python 377 again it shouldn't matter most of these functions are uh, they should work no matter what python version as long as they are three or later Okay, so let's run these lines first. And uh, what we are doing here is reading our input images. And by the way, I created an artificially bad image. So this is the input image, our reference image, gold standard image, and this is uh, something that has added noise. That's it, okay? And uh, this one is 25 sigma noise. So this is the image of which the quality of image, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to quantify the quality of image. Okay, so those two images, the first one I called it reference image. I should have called this like uh, whatever noisy image, but I called it IMG, okay? So now let's first look at what's available as part of scikit image. Again, like I said, these are all part of scikit image dot uh, metrics. Originally, I imported measure. Let me go ahead and delete it because the measure, all stuff from measure has been moved, okay? And again, uh, here is the link, go ahead and see. Uh, the documentation if you want. Okay, first let's go ahead and look at mean squared error again between these two images, okay? Reference image and for, actually let's do one thing first. Let's actually take our image is nothing but our reference image. I'm just converting or uh, uh, saying that my image is nothing but my reference image. So it gives us an idea of what mean squared error value should be if the two images are identical, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm just commenting this image out and then just saying that, hey, my image I'm trying to compare with is same as my reference image. So let's run all of this, this entire code, okay? And look at the output values. Okay, so here are uh, some of the output values again. The mean squared error using scikit image, it's giving a value of zero, obviously. The y2 equals to y1 in this case, right? So if you remember the equation I just showed you, 
uh, where is it? Okay, so if you look at the equation I just showed you, so this y equals to this y, which means uh, the value is zero, so mean squared error is zero. So if you look at this, uh, this would be, if mean squared error is zero, then you're dividing something by zero, that means the value is infinity, I guess. So that's probably why your peaks to signal noise ratio is infinity right there. Uh, root mean squared error, of course, is going to be zero. It's just the square root of that value, okay? And some of the other ones that it's uh, returning here, it's throwing an error saying that, hey, uh, your uh, uh, peak signal to noise ratio based on, uh, uh, you know, uh, is dividing by error, you know, infinity. So it's just throwing an error. Structural similarity index equals to one. So apparently if both images are identical, structural similarity index is one. I mean, which kind of makes sense. They are one to one. Okay, global relative error is zero. Multi-scale structural similarity index. This is a complex number output. So you get one plus zero J. The complex part is zero. And again, this value is one. So this is kind of like structural similarity index. Peaks to signal noise ratio is infinity. We know that root mean squared using this other library is also zero. There should be no difference. I mean, that's the whole point here. Uh, spectral angle mapper, again, go ahead and look how these guys are calculating, but I've never ever used it, so I'm not gonna speak a lot about it. Structural similarity index, again, this is uh, one and one. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is from this uh, SCWAR, guys. And uh, universal image quality index is one. Again, the both images are exactly the same, it's one. And pixel-based visual information fidelity. This is something else that SCWAR library actually offers, and this is almost one, okay? So now that we have an idea of how these values should range, let's actually use our regular image, okay? And let's go through the code, uh, very simple. Mean squared error, I'm just getting the mean squared error from metrics and uh, comparing reference image with the image that I want to compare. And then I'm just printing out the value. Same with peak signal to noise ratio as part of metrics. This is again the, uh, a function that's available, peak signal to noise ratio, reference image, image, uh, and data range is something that you can uh, provide if you want. Again, for everything, look at the documentation. I'm not gonna dwell too much time on that. Root mean squared error, pretty much similar. Now, structural similarity index, you gotta give your reference image and your image and uh, your data range like uh, for the structural similarity index, I, I'm just giving maximum minus the minimum value is the range. And is this multi-channel? I'm just gonna put true because I'm reading these images as RGB images, not as grayscale images, okay? So that's why I put multi-channel equals to true. Otherwise it may throw an error saying that, hey, uh, uh, expecting uh, one dimension, but you gave me three channels or three dimensions, okay? So that's that. And uh, uh, now we are switching to this full ref, which is uh, part of SEWAR, right? So they have something called global relative error. That's the value I'm calculating. And all of this is based out of this document that I just showed you. I just looked at this and I'm like, okay, uh, these are the inputs because this here, not much information is provided as part of PyPy. So I went to the actual source code and kind of extracted how, what is the best way uh, to uh, to use this. And uh, again, you can go ahead and uh, have a quick look at these, okay? Uh, uh, peak signal to noise with blocking effect factor is something that they have. And I blocked it out because uh, I think this was taking uh, too long. Uh, so I just uh, commented it out. Okay, so here is uh, uh, all the metrics. Again, I can keep talking about each of these. Structural similarity index, again, reference image, image, and then they have additional factors like, okay, what is the sliding window size? Okay, what is your K1, which is the first constant and second constant? I first start with default, and then I kind of change things to see what it actually means. Otherwise, go ahead and look at the original code to get more uh, information. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and run this to uh, look at what the values look like. Now with one image you don't know, the whole point of uh, uh, reference-based image quality is you run this on a few images to get an understanding of what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. If you're collecting images directly from the microscope or whatever your image source is, go ahead and keep collecting them, but then at some point you should, uh, uh, as human, you're saying this is bad image, whether it is because it's blurred, it's smudged, it's noisy, whatever that factor is, understand what MSC means to you in for your images. Understand what peaks to signal noise ratio mean to you, right? And uh, to me, one measure is not really 
useful. I try to use a whole bunch of metrics. And if you want to get even a bit more fancy, try to fit all of these metrics to a uh, to a, uh, for example, uh, multi-regression algorithm or some sort of a machine learning algorithm. So as the images are collected, it actually uh, it actually looks at all the metrics and say, based on all the metrics, it should say, okay, is this acceptable or not acceptable? Maybe that's a fun exercise we should do when we get to machine learning topics in future. Okay, so here are all the values. As you can see, now you have some real values for each of these. Like I said, I'm not going to talk about uh, uh, the value itself because it means nothing for your image context. So hopefully you can uh, you can uh, spit out these uh, values for your own images. OK, so let's go ahead and stop it there and uh, uh, please practice this uh, uh, on your own. But uh, I hope you found this again tutorial to be very useful. Please subscribe to this channel because uh, we are going to add a lot of these videos and uh, uh, by subscribing, you'll get the notice notification automatically. So thank you very much. And in the next tutorial, let's look at uh, image quality, but without using a reference. Thank you.